Hello my fellow AGD coders and uh, before I start if you are watching this on or around the 1st of January 2018 which is when I'm recording this then uh, I'd like to wish you all a very happy and prosperous new year. I hope that uh, everything you wish for comes true. Right so what are we going to do today? Well I'm going to show you something which uh, I've just been playing about with. It uses uh, the block uh, detect code which uh, which I've shown you on another video. If you get a chance then uh, go back and uh, have a look at that because uh, you'll need the knowledge to uh, to do this one. But as you can see here I've got this little chap. It's uh, not going to win any prizes for the graphics but as you can see we have him swimming about in the water and uh, jumping out like that. Now Obviously this is uh, something that you may have seen in uh, a few AGD games and perhaps you've even uh, implemented it yourself perhaps using uh, a custom block. What makes this uh, different is uh, if we now go out and uh, have a look at the blocks. Let's take a look at the blocks now and um, you will see here, just a second, here we go, you will see Yep, I am using a water block. So basically, I'm making the water blocks actually work, um, which is a, a nice feature. means that we don't have to use a custom block or a deadly block to do anything like that. And um, it's actually a little bit more flexible than a custom or deadly block because we're actually only looking at the bottom part of the sprite rather than the top. So uh, yeah. That's uh, that's basically what that does. Let's take a look at the code then. I'll go through it step by step. As I said, it does use uh, um, an ASM call, and um, I'll make that available on the uh, file section of the Facebook page. I've already done that once before, uh, but I'll but I'll upload it again just so you can find it easily. So let's take a look at what we're doing here. Uh, what we need to do basically is detect water. Um, at the feet of the player. So um, the first thing we do is we set line and column to the X and Y of the sprite and then we divide it uh, by 8. So that basically sets our line and column up to the uh, top left hand corner of the uh, sprite. If you imagine sprites are made of four squares of 8 by 8 pixels then it sets it basically to, uh, to that one. Uh, the next thing that we do is uh, we set the variable there which is the variable uh, rand and uh, this is a temporary variable and uh, we're going to use it as a flag because what we, what we need to do here is we need to detect if there is water underneath the player but on both sides <coughs> so if you imagine that um, you've got uh, four squares as I said and the top two squares would perhaps be in the air and the bottom two squares would be in the water and we need to check if the bottom two squares are in the water because that's what will basically trigger the uh, the effect that we want the water effect so we need to do two checks here um, let's take a look here then so the first the first thing that we want to check is um, we'll check the uh, bottom left square so we'll we'll run a check here as you can see on the line number if 22 is greater than the line number so we're basically obviously the sprite is if the sprite is at the bottom of the uh, of the screen then it will be one up from the bottom because it's a 16 by 16 so what we'll do is we'll check for 22 and that means we won't go over 23 and um, we'll add one we'll add one to the line which means we're looking as I said here at the uh, bottom left square of the sprite to see if that has water on it and uh, the way the ASM works is it runs a little routine. It looks in the uh, attribute buffer, the uh, buffer at the end of the uh, code, which stores the block types for the whole screen. And um, it basically checks to see if uh, if it's, uh, well, it basically checks whichever block type it is and puts it into variable opt. So there's variable opt, and as you can see, it has a value. We're checking for seven, which is a water block. So in other words, this whole routine is checking if the bottom left hand square of the sprite is on a water block. 
and if it is it will add one to rand and that is the first part of our flag it means that uh, one of the players feet if you like is in the water so the next thing that we do then is we now look to see if it's possible to check the bottom right hand square and uh, looking here you can see that's what I'm doing so if 31 greater than the column then add one to the column so move across to the right and run the ASM again and this time we're looking again at the bottom right square to see if that has water on it and we'll then add one to rand so what we want to do then is check to see if they are both correct so if both feet if you like are in the water then we'll set param a to be one and that means that uh, param a being zero will mean that the player is in the air and param a being one will mean that the player is in water so obviously if both feet are in the water rand will be two and so we'll set param a to be one and um, we'll then say yes both feet are in the water don't fall so if the player is falling as soon as he hits the water um, he will then basically recover and uh, won't die the next part as you can see here is just standard movement if key one left and right and here is key four which is basically when it's in the air it's a jump key and uh, when he's in the water it will be a swim key so if param a is zero in other words if you're in the air just do a jump otherwise if you can go up then move up and obviously as soon as he hits the top of the water um, he will uh, be able to jump again because he'll be out of the water so to speak so that's how that part works and then we'll also need to tell the code that um, if the player is in the air then uh, th they should fall but if they're in the water see if you can float down and if you can add one to x and so that will basically mean the player will float down and uh, that is pretty much the uh, basic code let's take a look at, uh, at, at the sprite and uh, just to show you here then so what we're doing is as I said these four squares and we're checking these bottom two here to see if the player is uh, is kind of bobbing in the water so to speak or under the water um, and uh, you can see that in action here so as soon as he hits the water um, I'll jump off here and there you go so he's straight in the water floating and um, obviously I can go down to the bottom and I can swim back up just like that and uh, basically changes the behavior of the uh, of the player so you can put a bit of water into your game and have him uh, swim across and as you can see here when you get to the top it's possible for, for the player to jump out so that's a little bit of fun as well okay so let's look at a couple more things a couple more options that you might find interesting um, what I've got here is uh, I've got just a standard uh, animation timer if you like um, it's, uh, it's just something that's quite standard to slow things down so that we'll we'll just change it every four cycles rather than uh, than every single time and um, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to put a uh, trail command in here so as you can see if if we are in the water then make a trail let's see what happens and there you go so that's quite a nice effect but it's maybe a little bit busy although it is it is pretty good but uh, that looks like sort of splashing water whereas if we want to get a sort of bubble effect then we need to reduce that so we'll use that C variable and uh, we'll put that in here and obviously you can change the values play about with them change them as you like to get your own effect that's that's suitable for your game and there you can see now that my, my man's got a little uh, sort of air bubble kind of thing it's not really floating up but it's a, but it's a nice effect it gives it a, a little bit of an extra feel of uh, of being in the water okay so in this example as you can see um, when the player goes in the water they uh, slowly drop down and you have to press jump to swim up and that's one possible way of controlling the uh, the player when they're in the water but it may be that you might prefer the player to float in the water and that you have to press jump to swim down that's another way uh, that uh, some games use that as an alternative so I'll show you how to do that 
now. So we don't need to change very much here actually, it's fairly straightforward. If you look here at uh, here key 4, um, instead of if can up, sprite up, we'll change this to say if you can go down, then sprite down. So that means now when I press jump, the player will swim down. Then the other thing that I'll change here is rather than uh, we don't need to check if can down here because what we're going to do is make the player float up and obviously as soon as the player hits um, air then he will automatically switch off anyway so we don't need to do a check if you did have water at the very top of a screen or something like that you might need to check for it but uh, let's have a look at the effect and as you can see now it's quite a nice little bobbing effect there the player is basically stuck and floating on the water and if I uh, if I press and hold down the fire button then the player will swim under the water and if I tap it at, uh, at the right moment just as it's uh, bobbing out of the water you can still jump out of the water so it's quite a nice little effect really you can swim down and um, and then obviously if you want you can put some enemies in the water or sharks or whatever you feel like and uh, it's also possible to, to swim right down get some treasure or something float back up and uh, jump out of the water as you can see here just like that okay so that pretty much uh, covers it obviously it's entirely up to you what you do with this you you would obviously want slightly better graphics than this this is just purely minimal just to show you uh, the effect and uh, you might want the player to be uh, facing a certain direction you might want to put in a swim sprite for example again you just need to test parame and uh, if it's in the air or in the water use a different um, use a different sprite image okay great well I hope you found that useful um, and uh, I'll perhaps be back with another video fairly soon in the meantime take good care keep enjoying the spectrum and of course AGD and as always happy coding bye bye